major update to my What's My Image script. Let's look at all these annotation tools. Welcome to SETI Astro. It's been a long time uh, working on version 2 here for What's My Image. I know there's a, a bit of clunkiness when you're trying to annotate anything within Pix Insight, so I wanted to uh, load up this script with as many annotation tools as we can. There's also been a number of advanced feature updates since our last video, so I think we need to step through all, all of it and really see what the script is capable of doing now. So again, uh, there's the advanced search pane, and this allows you to filter various object types. For our examples, I think we're going to go ahead and look for quasars in my Andromeda image here. So if you select anything in this right pane, be sure to click Confirm Selections. And then uh, I'm going to search the entire image for quasars. And in the mini pane, it, it pops up all the ones it found. And then in the central pane, right, you can, you can do your zooming. And, you know, some of them aren't visible, some of them are visible. Uh, so let's kind of step through some of these other, other changes here. If you now click on the Annotation Tools button, a whole lower pane will open up for us. And what that's going to do is allow us to do all sorts of annotation changes uh, on, our, on our image here. As always, you, could, you can click the marker you, you want and you could double click to pull up the information for it. In this particular quasar, has a redshift of uh, 1.9, which is, which is really high. I like utilizing a, a redshift to distance uh, calculator here. Uh, Ned writes JavaScript cosmological calculator, and we had a, a 1.9 uh, for a redshift, and we're in a flat universe. So this object is, you know, 16.7 billion light years away. Uh, that's the co-moving distance, and the light's been traveling for for over 10 billion years, right? The the universe was just a little over three and a half billion years old when when it was emitted. So let's say we, we want to put some of that information in here to to show our families, right? Like all, all the cool stuff we're finding. You know, we could we could toggle our names on and off, but maybe you don't want, you know, that, that white doesn't look quite right. So we we could change our font colors. Uh, we can go we can go with a green maybe. Um, there there's font sizes, you can make them you can make them bigger. You could also change the font type. I got a couple different font types in here. And then like this marker down here, we can't even see the quasar. So we don't want that annotated. So if you select any of these markers, there's an there's option now to delete the marker over here in the, in the lower right. Boop, and it's gone. So now, now that's not even gonna be annotated in our image. Some of the other items now that you could do, uh, Maybe you want to place an arrow. When you're utilizing any of the tools down here, in order to place them in the main image, you gotta alt click and drag. So let's go ahead and alt click our little arrow here. We'll put it on our image. It turns red just to show you that that's the active one. It is, it is yellow, which is the, the shape color we want there. And we wanna add text. This was, this was 16.7 billion light years away, right? So now that you typed your text in there and you're in the checkbox, you could do alt click again and it'll just put the text in for you. 16.7 billion light years away. Um, there's other, other options, right? You could, you could freehand uh, just drawing on here if you want. Let's, uh, let's go with a different color for that. Let's do a, a blue and we want to kind of like underline our our guy there, ugh, that, that looks ugly though. You can remove the active shape. So there's a button here, just remove the active shape. It'll take care of that. But let's go ahead and uh, put another shape down. Let's let's just draw an ellipse around this, this star here. While you're in this preview pane, if you didn't want that arrow, you could use the space bar and it'll cycle through your active shapes. So you can go up to that marker or that arrow 
and remove it if you want and, and redraw it. So it, it does allow you that option as well. There's also the button to clear all, which will clear all the shapes you've drawn. And I do have a another option down here to place a celestial compass. And again, you just alt click and I'll, and I'll put a, a celestial compass in for you. Um, to give you more room, right, you could, you could toggle the advanced search off if you want and resize the dialogue. And there's always, you know, zoom out and zoom in. The other option is if you want to save just this, just this image that you're seeing up here without saving the whole image, you can click save annotated cropped view only. And now when you click save annotated image, it will only save what's in the, in the viewport there. As always, you still have the option to save the full CSV file if you want to export all the data in the tree box down here to, to put it in Excel or whatever and then dump that into PixInsights annotate image. You could also take an image you generated from annotate image and open it up in what's in my image to do further annotations with some of these freehand tools. Uh, that make it just a lot easier to place arrows, circle things, put text on the put text on the screen. It, it really should help you within PixInsight just annotate up your image a little bit better and, and put some of these cool little notes in here to show everybody what's in your image and, and all the cool things that you've been finding. Another edit feature is if you control click, you can define distances between two points. So this was two arc minutes, 37 arc seconds. This may help you determine the uh, celestial distance in the sky between maybe close binaries, or you want to figure out how far away certain objects are from each other. I know, I know I've struggled just to figure out how far away certain things are from each other in the sky. Sometimes it's, it's hard to find that information out. So yeah, now, now you can control click and, 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 and put in distances and those do uh, act like shapes. So you can toggle through any of them you have drawn with the space bar and you can go ahead and, and remove them as well. So as always, you could, you could still shift click and, and draw a, a circle to query Sinbad in that area. And, and it annotates, you know, a number of things, but there's also a new deep search query. And, and I will give some caution here. It searches a lot of data. There's the Gaia data in there, two mass, SDSS, the US Navy's deep sky survey. Uh, so it, it's a lot. I would, I would recommend using small circles and, and search with that. But you could see, you know, Sinbad only pulled up a handful of objects in this in this region here if you click deep search it'll go ahead and query all that it's gonna go ahead and and find like everything that's that's within that circle and if it's too much you may if it doesn't return any results you may actually have to just make your circle smaller uh, because it, it may have just overloaded the uh, the data array but now you can see everything in this circle here has just a lot of a lot of points around it, a lot of different items. There's different photometric catalogs. There's the the two mass point sources, Gaia data, just just tons tons of information. And now if you double click this marker, it's not going to pull up Sinbad anymore. It's going to do that NED search right at that location with a very tight radius around it of just two arc seconds. So you could find that, find that particular object that you, you double clicked on. Again, I would, I would use caution with, with using that small, small search circles. The other thing in the wrench, if you are using the deep search, definitely increase the number of objects you could download at, at a single time. It'll make sure that you're, you're getting all the information as you can in there.
So I hope you guys like the uh, big update here to our What's In My Image script, allowing you to just, just annotate away. As always, if you'd like to become a channel member, we'd greatly welcome you. Please comment, like, and subscribe.